all those things we discussed, one of the most important things regarding freedom of speech and accountability is the persecution and arrest of, of Julian Assange right now. So first, my question would be if you could give us briefly uh, the, the current situation of, of Assange's situation. Well, his situation is very precarious. Uh, uh, if we just look at the individual and the personality and his health situation, it is declining as is natural and normal for somebody who has de been deprived of freedom for all this time under this ex ex immense pressure. Julian has been deprived of uh, full freedom for you know 12 years now. Uh, house arrest, uh, asylum in the Ecuador embassy without any access to daylight or exercise outdoors for seven years and now three and a half years uh, in, in a maximum security prison in, in London waiting and fighting against the extradition. So that is his, his situation is not good. His health has declined and uh, it should not be a, um, uh, which is expected of, of somebody who has endured so much. Legally, he is now fighting against uh, the extradition in the courts uh, and we are now waiting for the uh, High Court in London to uh, uh, evaluate the, the request for an appeal. We fully appreciate, uh, or fully, fully expect that this will be a, a. They will hear the appeal. It would be scandalous if they would not hear the appeal. Uh, the, the answer to that question will come in the next days or weeks. Uh, and then uh, there will be a court case and hearing. And in that hearing, all the, uh, the most serious stories of, uh, of violations against Julian will be for the first time heard in an appeal court and with the added evidence that have come since the first round for example the news report that the CIA was plotting to kidnap or kill Julian in the Ecuador embassy in 2017 which by itself should be enough to prove that he will no stand a chance of any fair trial in the United States and therefore the extradition should collapse so this is the, the situation that uh, if everything goes to the worst, uh, he might be on a plane, rendition plane to the US in the next weeks. So time is running out for us. We don't, uh, and we have, to, we have to take into account the worst case scenario. So that is the reason why we are taking uh, an increased step on, uh, on uh, getting on board as many political uh, forces as possible to solve this on a political platform because in the essence of it, it has nothing to do with the laws. That is what has been exposed in all these proceedings in London courtroom. Uh, despite the facade of, of, of justice in a, in a very fancy courtrooms with judges with wigs on their heads, what has been exposed through the entire process that this has nothing to do with the law. It's a pure political persecution. If you could uh, explain to me briefly, you mentioned this. There was a lawsuit against Mike Pompeo, right, from, yeah. from Spanish courts regarding this uh, uh, assassinate attempt against Assange. Well, actually, there are several lawsuits where, 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 where Mike Pompeo is implicated. Uh, one is by Julian's uh, lawyers. Uh, and journalists who were visiting him in the embassy and who were spied upon by the CIA uh, when uh, Mike Pompeo was director of the, the agency. And of course, he later be, became uh, the Secretary of State in Trump's government. So he is, he is implicated in that case. That's an American case, which is launched in America. And, uh, and uh, Mike Pompeo has been subpoenaed to, to appear in the, that court case. Uh, there is another case ongoing in Madrid, and that is against the security company that worked on behalf of the CIA in installing all this uh, spying on, on, on Julian and everybody who visited him uh, uh, and broke the rights of him, his rights, and all, everybody who visited. That case is in, in the courts in Madrid and is ongoing. In that case, uh, uh, the, the uh, magistrate uh, judge in, uh, in, uh, in Madrid has uh, uh, requested Mike Pompeo's present, presence uh, as former director of the CIA. 
as it is obvious that he must have had uh, knowledge and approve of, uh, of this uh, outrageous operation. So there are many fronts to fight on and uh, uh, in the pushback uh, revelations have come forth which are you know, astonishing in this time and age. Uh, astonishing. So when you, you mentioned, so in the beginning you mentioned the reaction <clears throat> against uh, WikiLeaks and this kind of, of journalism enterprise. And, and now you mentioned about the espionage of some cases. Uh, can we say, and, and I mentioned, for example, the scandal of the spy, uh, Pegasus spyware in Israeli app that uh, was, uh, uh, revealed was uh, spying on journalists and activists. That th this would be part of the reaction. I mean, governments and even corporations may be trying to spy and persecute people like uh, like Assange. Yeah, governments, corporations, and government in, in collusion with uh, corporations. Uh, that is that is the ongoing trend that is uh, that is uh, uh, extremely serious and needs to be addressed. Yes, that is, that is has been ongoing. Of course, the revelation of Edward Snowden, uh, which we helped him to get to security, uh, was uh, astonishing, especially to Americans who are rather sensitive to uh, to spying on their on their on their private matters. But uh, these uh, these uh, elements uh, have been growing, and it's a part of the same trend. It did not stop in 2010. It escalated in 2010. But this, it, it was a trend that had started uh, earlier. And uh, uh, unfortunately, for example, it, it didn't seem to matter who was uh, in, in uh, the White House at the time, whether it was a Democrat or Republican. Uh, it manifested, for example, in the outrageous escalation in, under the Obama administration in their war against whistleblowers. And I mean, you can go on the internet and find, uh, you know, outcries for, from from Obama when he was campaigning before 2008, that he would take special care of protecting the rights of whistleblowers. What happened under Obama? More whistleblowers were uh, prosecuted under the Espionage Act than in the terms of all presidents before him combined. Uh, we said at the time, this is extremely serious because this is the, a, 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 a step in one direction and one direction only. They will go after whistleblowers on, or, and call them spies and, you, and abuse this, this uh, espionage act. Then they will come after journalists. And unfortunately, we were right. And it was not until the abuse of the Espionage Act against Julian Assange, that, that, uh, that the, the chilling effect of it really hit in. And uh, this, is, this, is, uh, this is, so it's part of a trend. And yes, the, uh, it is all part of the same fight for truth and human rights. The attack on privacy is, has always been in our book, you know, part of the, the fight. Uh, and, and, and manifest in our mission at Wikileaks. So Julian was very outspoken uh, very early on in, in that field. Uh, and it is the other side of the coin, you know. We want transparency and accountability for those in power, but we need to protect the privacy of the powerless. But instead of that scale, we have the opposite, increased secrecy and impunity by those in power, uh, but an overall uh, attack on the privacy and the basic human rights of those that are powerless. And those scales need to be reversed. That is of total importance all around the world, in Brazil as elsewhere. And one last question, so you, you talk a little about that, but and thinking about the worst case scenario regarding Assange and, and the consequence, how, what, what would be the consequences of that? And, and so because of that, why is it so important for, for political progressive forces, even governments? I, I, I saw you met uh, Gustavo Petro in Colombia, and, but other also Lula will, will, will take mandate in January 
why is it important to fight back against this, as you said, horrible trend? The case against Julian Assange and WikiLeaks is a test case. It is a test case of our resolve, but it's also a test case by, by the forces that we are fighting, the evil forces, on how far they can take it. It will set a precedent on how, uh, how governments will deal with the media. If they are, if they are successful in, uh, in, uh, in extraditing Julian Assange and put him up on trial uh, as a spy and lock him up for, uh, you know, for the rest of his life, that will send a signal that they can go the same road elsewhere, anywhere in the world. And it will put in jeopardy the safety of all journalists everywhere, including in Colombia, where we just came from, and including here in Brazil, uh, where we're hoping to get uh, uh, manifested support from uh, President-elect uh, Lula. And there's a realization, a strong realization, that, uh, that uh, this is the case, and the danger is there. There is a misconception that we are just fighting for Julian. Julian is a friend of mine, and certainly I would fight for him in any way. But he is just the face of a, of a, of a huge problem. It is, it is about press freedom worldwide. It's about human rights worldwide. It's a part of our general pushback against the attack on decency and the core values that constitute this thin layer that, that is our current civilization. If we don't push back, we're gone. Well, thank you very much, Sarapsan. Thanks for having me.